Well, walking today in a totally different weather, 50 degrees day. Barely a few days ago was 15 degrees, you know, or 20 degrees. It's amazing change of weather. But now I want to talk about the final judgment. That is the theme. Jesus made some astounding uh, separation of the sheep and the goat based on the expression of mercy ministry, which is only part of it. So this is a really important message. Let's read. When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all His angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Okay, so first of all, people seem to forget that there will be a judgment. How does judgment look like? Well, this is a this is a scene of that judgment at the end time when Christ, the Son of Man or Son of God comes in His glory. This Jesus comes in His glory. First of all, folks, never be fooled by what you see in the world today. It seems like life goes on as usual. It is not. Every day that passes, we are inching closer to the end of the time, end time, end of the world. Well, I wouldn't call it end of the world, end of this present world, and the beginning of the new millennium, of the eternity, rather, not millennium, when Christ returns. So we're inching closer to the return of the King. Okay? I think that's where the Lord of the Rings, Return of the King, the third sequel, is all about. We are waiting and longing for the return of our king. And that, that's actually going to happen. And uh, for a lot of people, it's not going to be pretty at that time. It's a huge warning to those people who are slacking in their belief and still self-denial and refusing to acknowledge the Creator God will be in for a really rude awakening and judgment coming. But for those Christians who are slacking as well, who are semi-sleeping or semi-not sleeping, semi-awake, it's time to wake up. It's time to really do something for the Lord and begin to read the Word of God. That's what I'm doing in this passage. Okay, because there'll be separation. What is this separation? Verse 32, before him will be gathered all the nations, all the nations of the people, People of all ethnic, all ethna, all ethnic background will come together, or different languages and tribes come together before, before Christ. He sits on the throne with God the Father. Okay, and uh, he will separate people one from other as a shepherd separate the sheep from the goat. Saying, and Jesus sit on the throne. On the throne, he will separate. The trillions and trillions of people, humanity gathered before him. He will separate us like, he, like a shepherd separate the sheep from the goat. What does he want to do there? What is he trying to do? Okay, verse 33. This is still Matthew 25, okay? Verse 33 says, And he will place the sheep on his right and the goat on the left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. You want to be on the right side. You want to be separated as a sheep, not goat. You want to be on the right side. You want to be the right side with God too. So when God will finally execute all his judgments, okay, say, come. You who are blessed by my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. God has prepared the kingdom for all those elect. He, God has, has blessed them to inherit the kingdom prepared for earth from the foundation of the world. Talking about predestination, talking about predestined and the foreknowledge. God has prepared all this before, we, before, before when we were even born, before our parents were born. All this is already set in the master plan of God. 
God in all eternity, before the earth is created, before the world was created, before Genesis 1 came about, God has already prepared a kingdom, eternal kingdom, for those who love Him. Hallelujah. Now, you, you hear this, it almost sounds like a fairy tale. Well, it is better than fairy tale, actually. So, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. Now, verse 35, now hit the earth now. That's a reality now. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, you clothed me. I was sick, and you visited me. I was in prison, and you came to see me. Did you hear that? Those people who are blessed by the Lord, go to the site where you inherit the kingdom that God has prepared for all these people. They are the ones who visit the sick in the hospital. Okay? Those are the ones who visit those in prison. Those who are naked, those who, those who clothe, give clothing to those who are naked. Those are those who give food to those who are hungry and give drinks to those who are thirsty. All these things, these are mercy ministry. You know, in the church, there's mercy ministry, which is a deacon, diaconate or deacons doing that. And the church members usually donate money and give their fund to help them. Okay. But the social justice movement has taken us to another level, which is, which is really a good thing. What church has done is the church today actually bring it uh, on the individual level because God has trained us, taught us the Word of God so much so that we are to give, bring the food uh, to, the, to the needy ourselves. Uh, like, like just, just give some examples. The church we are attending uh, uptown in the Washington Heights, they are big in social justice. So there's a, a lot of needy people well, anyway, there's a lot of needy, needy people. But in, in New York, there's a lot of poverty, impoverished. Washington Heights, not exactly, but there's a lot of brokenness in there for sure. Violence. And there's a lot of poverty too. And there's a lot of middle upper class too. Okay, so, so there's a, a lot of youth programs to, to train the youths and uh, who are who otherwise could have gotten to crime you know so the church is doing something positive and there's hope for new york a redeemer church in new york is doing that and my wife and i we give money every year to those organizations for them to uh to host our feeding programs for the poor and those who need the clothing etc so that kind of thing so what, what I'm trying to say is, it is interesting, Jesus specifically brought out this aspect of it for us, almost like a requirement to enter the kingdom of God, okay? Actually, this is a wrong interpretation. That is not the requirement. That's just a fruit of you believe in Christ. That, what gets you saved for eternal kingdom is believing in Christ, faith in Christ. But like James said, faith must bring out fruit. Show me the deeds. You have faith in Christ. But what about show me what have you done with those faith in Christ? So that's the kind of thing we need to know and understand. It's very, very important. You can't say, I have faith in Christ. And then come, come home and slack in your basement, watching movies and video games, you know, what not. You got to show that. You see, so so don't misunderstand that. You don't get uh, saved by by doing these things, okay? Uh, you don't get saved by 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 uh, visiting the sick or uh, feeding the poor or any of those sort of things. Those in itself do not save you. Remember that. Deeds by itself, good deeds by itself, do not get you saved. It's it's a source of power. Is, is put your faith in Christ as, as the Savior of the world, as the Lord and God Almighty in Him, and follow Him and love Him, that gets you saved. 
But after you loved him and put your faith in him, you grow in him, you automatically want to help out the poor and those in need because that is the very nature of God. Hallelujah. So, it's just really... So that one I've explained clear, okay? But I just want to bring another point. The fact that Jesus specifically and intentionally bring out the, the whole thing about, about feeding the poor, helping, helping the needy, and visiting those who are sick and in prison, all this, all this are expression of love and caring. That's who God is. God specifically bring that out because that is who he is. How beautiful, right? How wonderful to, to follow and serve a God that, that is of that kind of character. You know, it's not like an emperor conquering and with thrust and power. Yes, he has tremendous power, much, much more than Napoleon and Caesar and everybody else. All the tyrants the world ever had combined. But he's also the most gentle and humble. Jesus said, learn from me, take my yoke. For I'm humble and gentle. You see that? What does that mean? When, when Jesus saw the leprous, everybody runs away. The leprous guy ran to Jesus, Master, Master, Rabbi, Rabbi, have mercy on me. Jesus touched him. Everybody do not dare to touch him. But Jesus touched him and healed him. That brings such tremendous power and love. When the, uh, what do you call it? Some uh, the, 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 the woman, Samaritan woman, who, was, who had bleeding for years and years. She longed to touch Jesus' clothes to be healed. And all the men around, nobody will let her come because she's unclean first, second, she's a woman. In those days of society, that's how it works, culturally. But she pressed in. She falls away in. All she needed is a touch. Her faith is so high. Because of her faith, Jesus, she was healed. Her blood stopped. Her, her blood dropped. Uh, stopped immediately. Jesus asked, turn around. There's so many men pushing and hustling around him. And Jesus stopped and turned around and asked, who touched me? And then Peter goes, Lord, there's so many people hustling around you. And you ask, who touched you? <laughs> Jesus didn't even bother to answer Peter. Well, Jesus asked that question because he felt power coming out of him to heal. Actually, she, he might have, but I can't remember. But the woman, the Samaritan woman who was healed on the spot, bowed down and worshipped. Lord, it's me. You touched me. I'm healed. And Jesus was so pleased with her and said, Woman, thou faith has healed you. Whoa, hallelujah. You see, God is so pleased with people seeking Him, longing for Him, who have faith in Him. That's what God wants. Little children come to Him. Stop pretending you got everything. Stop pretending you are so eager about yourself. Okay? And, uh, and that is what that is what is uh this this verse talked about you know help the poor needy nobody wants to help the lepers jesus did nobody wants to touch the the unclean lady who was was leprous uh, who was a bleeding problem jesus did okay all the things that people don't want to do jesus welcomed them loved them that's what Jesus is talking about. That is the very heart of Christ. The heart of Christ. I'm humble and gentle. Take my yoke. Jesus full filled with compassion for the world. That is who he is. I just want to encourage you. That's a compassion and love of Christ. But there's another side. And especially judgment day. And at the end of it, he said, For those of you who refuse to do any of these things to the poor, to the hungry, and mis mis mistreated, etc., go to where darkness and weeping and gnashing of teeth is to help eternal fire. He's very stern. He's very stern and serious and uh, breathing out judgment of God on one side 
the other's heart is so full of compassion and tenderness and humility and gentleness and meekness. What a God, right? That is our God. We all miss him. And God, Jesus wants us to learn from him and live in Christ. Our God is so awesome, is mighty. Amen.